Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the Behringer Bigfoot. Now, this is a condenser microphone that is basically the definition of we have a Blue Yeti at home. It's probably the most blatant, like we're trying to be this of a product I have ever seen. And it has all the same specs and features of the Blue Yeti, but we're gonna take a quick look at it, do a sound test and see if it's the right mic for you. So let's open it up. Got a manual, USB cable. One thing to note is that it is USB mini, which is of course the same one as the Blue Yeti, but it is a very outdated cable. So this type of cable, it's very outdated. USB type C would have been much preferred. However, they were going for the exact same as the Blue Yeti. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Blue Yeti was an absolute staple, like seven, eight years ago. I think it came out over a decade ago. However, microphone technology has improved a ton. There are a lot more audio interfaces that you can use that are a lot cheaper, readily available. So you can use XLR microphones. For example, right now I'm recording this with the Shure SM7B. Now this mic is a couple years old, but I'm just a little confused as to why they wanted to copy like a 12 year old product. I know that the Blue Yeti is still pretty popular today, but it just seems a little weird to release something like this. In terms of similarities, they both have the mute button headphone jack on the front and on the back they have the four different polar patterns. So you're generally going to be wanting to use the third one if you're speaking directly into it. Of course you can use the others depending on the situation. I always found these to be a little bit overrated and keep in mind these are condenser microphones. So that means they pick up pretty much everything in your room. So if you're in a slightly noisy environment you probably won't want one of these. You're going to be wanting something like a dynamic microphone which this is so it's not able to pick up a lot of the noise around it as well. It's really just kind of honing in on what is being put into it. But taking a physical look at these mics, they are about as close as you can possibly be. The only little difference is that on the top it's flat, but on the Blue Yeti it's rounded. So let's plug it in and see how it sounds. This is a test of the Behringer Bigfoot. I'm about one foot away. I have no pop filter or anything, which is something I recommend when using the Blue Yeti. So I would probably also recommend using it with this. I'm gonna go through a couple of sentences. The birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. The boy was there when the sun rose. The small pup gnawed a hole in the sock. The fish twisted and turned on the bent hook. The swan dive was far short of perfect. And this is a test of the Yeti classic. The small pup gnawed a hole in the sock. The fish twisted and turned on the bent hook. Press the pants and sew a button on the vest. The swan dive was far short of perfect. Subscribe to Juggle Boy Minus and make sure to leave a like on the video. Two blue fish swam in the tank. So now I'm gonna switch back and forth between them a little bit more quick so you can kind of hear the difference. This is the Behringer Bigfoot, and this is the Yeti. This is the Yeti, and this is the Behringer Bigfoot. So they're probably going to sound very similar overall. The only difference I've noticed is that the mute button is green when it's on. And for the Blue Yeti, when it's recording, it's solid red, but when it's muted, it's blinking, which isn't exactly clear. I've actually mixed that up a few times, and all of this right now has been recorded on the Behringer Bigfoot. They're very similar microphones. They have the same 44 kilohertz recording, the same design, about the same weight. It's almost as if Behringer was like trying to be one of those cheap movies that people like mistake for the other one. But unlike those like other cheap movies that you find in the bargain bin that look like the other movies, this one actually pretty much lives up to the Blue Yeti itself. But keep in mind that's not the highest of bars as this is a 12 year old microphone and this is a two year old microphone. And you really can't find the Yeti for less than about 70 or so. Maybe you can get it a bit cheaper used, but brand new is gonna be going for like 80 to $100. Where this guy on Amazon right now when making this video is like $27. However, keep in mind this is a condenser microphone. So it will pick up everything in your room. So if you have a little bit noisier of an environment, maybe you have like the washer in the background or maybe you have neighbors close that are loud, it might be able to pick that up a little bit. So you might be better off with a dynamic microphone. 
but if you got a relatively quiet environment, condenser mics can be very good. And of course, the four different polar patterns make it a little more versatile than your average mic. But again, I think they're a little overrated. You're mostly just going to be using one setting. You're probably just also going to want to have a pop filter for it for those P's and S's so it doesn't pop on the microphone. One of the only other complaints I have is that it's still using the USB mini. So I don't have many of those cables lying around anymore. I have a ton of USB type C's. So I just wanted to make this quick video to give you guys a sound test so you know it's a legit microphone and not just some off-brand microphone. If you want to get your own Bigfoot, there is a link in the description down below, so make sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.